It's 1998 and I still have no car of my own, no job, no real future, but I am on the mend. So it's 1998 and the music I have to say is not too bad. I'm going to Miami. To Miami. Now I'm an 80s boy and anything by Run DMC is awesome. And when they teamed up with Jason Nevins, I love this song. Like that, and that's the way it is. Now I can't say I'm a huge fan of Robbie Williams, but this song is incredible. I'm loving angels instead. I'm a huge fan of Madonna's, but I wasn't a big fan of her in the 90s. But this song won me over, and I love her with black hair. If I could your heart. And now for some of the games I was playing in 1998. StarCraft 64. Unlike Super Mario 64, I wasn't a big fan of Zelda going 3D. I'd rather Zelda Link to the Past, but I still loved Ocarina of Time. There were two games on PlayStation 1 that kept me very occupied, Resident Evil 2 and Metal Gear Solid. I know I look biased to the Nintendo 64, but 1998 was just the year I was playing a lot of N64, and my top three games for 1998 are these. Number three, Banjo-Kazooie. At a time when I was heavily into Star Wars, I couldn't go past Rogue Squadron 1 on the N64. Now as good as Rogue Squadron was, there's one game I was waiting for. In fact, I was waiting 8 years for its sequel. That's right, it's F-Zero X on the Nintendo 64. This would be my favourite F-Zero of the whole series. Better than the Super Nintendo, even better than the GameCube. I just love this F-Zero. It's the most time I've spent on an F-Zero game. Even though the 3D graphics are over 20 years old, in my opinion, it still holds up today. It's 1998 and I've been talking to Jen for around six months at this point. We desperately wanted to meet each other, but the timing wasn't right. However, she told me about this guy named Tony Robbins, some motivational speaker that she wanted me to watch to maybe get over my fear of flying and come and meet her. I gotta be more afraid of what I'm gonna miss out on, missing out on my mission, missing out on who I'm supposed to be. Missing. In other words, if you're not gonna get rid of fear, then use fear. Use fear or it uses you, it's that simple. Not only that, she thought this guy could do me so much good just from the things he was saying and his outlook on life. So I decided to give him a try. I have seen this guy on late night infomercials, but I was a little bit skeptical. She made me promise her to go and buy the tapes. She actually said she'd buy the tapes for me if I didn't buy them. So I went out and bought the tapes. I did make a promise, I'll give it a go. I put the first tape in. It was upbeat, powerful, and it made me feel energized. Hi, this is Tony Robbins. Welcome to Get the Edge, a seven-day program to transform your life, your body, your emotions, your relationships, your finances, the whole enchilada. Now, you may be thinking it sounds like a gimmick, but Tony Robbins, these tapes transform my life forever, even to this very day. But after I listened to all seven days, the seven tapes, I got the next volume, and that was Personal Power. This one lifted me to a whole new level, mainly to do with my health, the way I eat, the way I even speak. Stop using negative words and start using positive ones. There are a heap of different exercises you could do each day, such as moving and breathing. So basically taking a walk and breathing deeply. But my two favorites were being grateful and visualization. The other one I did like was strategy. The question I have for you is this. John has spent 25 years of his life to develop this ultimate chocolate cake. No one 
makes butter, better chocolate cake in the world than John, the baker. The question is this, can you and I, amateur bakers that we are, produce the same quality chocolate cake as John the baker, even though we don't have 25 years of experience, yes or no? Yes. yes. How? How? That's right, by his recipe, which is also known as his, his strategy. I started changing everything. I stopped eating meat. I started going to the gym. After the first 10 days, I felt absolutely amazing. I felt unstoppable. I was telling Jen about my progress and she was so happy for me. The only thing is we didn't talk as much. She was busy with her life and I was busy with the healing process. Our lives started getting very busy, but we understood each other. And Jen went off to university and unfortunately we lost contact. It was sad, but for some reason it felt like it's meant to be. She was here for that short amount of time when I needed a real friend. Thank you for being a friend. A few weeks went by and I wanted to grow my mind and my skill set. So I enrolled in something I was very fascinated in, a body language course. Imagine being able to read someone without even talking to them. That's what I was interested in. I spent over 600 hours on body language courses all up. The guy teaching it said I was the keenest student he ever had in his 30 years of teaching. I did three courses and one advanced one. I still listen to Tony Robbins, in fact more so. I ordered Personal Power 2, a 30 day program. Whilst I was doing the body language course, I decided to go out with some women just for female company. Some I met on the internet with the program Freetel, and some I met through relatives, such as my mother or something like that. Most lasted just one date, but sometimes I'd get a second date. During this growth process, I wanted to start dating, and not dating as looking for a relationship, but just going on a dinner date or a movie date and get to know women. Keep in mind Kyle is the only girlfriend I've ever had. When I got to the second date, I started to reveal a little bit more about myself, my hobbies. I'm into cars. I'm into Star Wars and I'm into video games. And you cannot believe the response I got when I mentioned video games. And it'd usually be like, how old are you again? Like, I'm too old to play video games, and this was a problem. He is too old. So I met an amazing girl. She was absolutely fantastic. We got along, we had four dates. We went for dinner, then the movies, then dinner again, then the movies again, and I thought, well, now I'm gonna have to start to show my true colors. I know everything about her, but I was holding a few things in reserve. So I said, do you like cars? And she goes, yeah, yeah, I do, I love cars. And, yeah, she likes fast cars. I said, okay, no problem. I said, do you like Star Wars? Yes, I do. I love Star Wars and Star Trek. I thought, this is going fantastic. I said, do you like video games? And then she looked at me really weird, like, her, you know, her face is all scrunched up. She goes, what? Kids games, video games for kids? I said, they're not just for kids, you know. And she goes, well, no, I'm not really into video games. So I went home that night feeling a bit depressed and unfortunately Jen was not contactable. But I started thinking about this woman. She loved everything I did. We had so much in common. I love the way she looked. She liked me. But video games were the problem. Maybe this is the problem. Maybe I needed to sell my video games and just cut ties with it. And maybe I needed to mature up. So that's something I'm now going to have to do.